Welcome back to another Mac Tech Tech. Today, and for the next three installments, we have upgrade guides for the Doctor Who Precons. We'll be starting off with Timey Wimey, featuring the 10th Doctor, and Rose Tyler, as our two commanders. This deck is heavily focused on the suspend mechanic and is looking to time travel to keep our vanishing cards in play and cheat our suspended cards out sooner. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode, and maybe earn yourselves a shout out in one of our future videos. Speaking of which, today's episode is dedicated to DI Records and their founder Dakota. DI Records is an independent record label with an emphasis on quality music, mental health, and suicide prevention. There's a link in the description below for you to check out them and all the awesome work they do. DI Records, you rock. Let's dive on into the time stream to see which cards just didn't quite make the cut. Topping this list is the adorable Adipose Offspring. These tiny aliens have the opportunity to swarm the board with a bunch of 2-2 two -two bodies, netting at least two of them if they didn't emerge. Well, I think this is a decent effect, I don't think it falls in line with what we're really looking to do. So these little adorable aliens, they're out of here. Astrid Peth is in a similar token generating spot. When they attack or ETB, they get to make a food token, and when you sack one of those tokens, they get to explore. This card will likely make its way over to my Food and Fellowship deck, where I feel like it synergizes a little better. The life gain can be nice here, but isn't the main focus of the deck. If we were controlling the top of our deck with something like Sensei's Divining Top to ensure we constantly hit lands off the Explore trigger, she'd likely get to stay. But since that card sits around $20, it's just a little too costly to add to the deck. In a non-budget upgrade guide, you might have gotten to stay, but the Hobbits will welcome you with open arms. Next up, we have a two-for-one deal with Coward Slash Killer. For two mana, we can make a creature unable to block and time travel once, not too shabby. It's a pretty decent deal and kind of fits our theme. Killer is a nice way to counter some typal decks, dealing three damage to each creature that that opponent controls, as well as any incidental creatures that just happen to share a type. We've added some repeatable ways to speed up our suspend cards to the point where I don't really think we need this one. And, at least in my pod, I don't come across a whole ton of typal decks, so I'm not that concerned about losing this. Kraken Time follows up our Cowardly Killer, and has the effect that you know I'm not super fond of. It's Exile until this card leaves the battlefield. Sure, with Vanishing on the card and a little bit of time travel, we can manipulate how long this card gets to stay, and how many cards we get to exile. But allowing our opponents to wipe the board and suddenly have a board state before anyone else has a chance to recover just doesn't swing it for me, so for that reason, it's not going to make the cut. Wouldn't you know it, Grasp of Fate is up to the same trick, though in a little bit more of a limited scope. When it ETBs, we get to exile one non-land permanent per opponent until it's gone. With no vanishing the track, this one requires our opponents to remove it all on their own but it still isn't the type of card that I feel is strong in Commander with three players looking to remove it. Jenny, Generated Anomaly, is a double striking 2-3 that explores when it deals damage. A lot like Astrid Peth, if we weren't trying to keep the guide to a budget and we were adding in more ways to see the top of our library or better yet modify it, she might get to stay, but as it is, she's got to go. Mindstone is up next, and it's not a bad mana rock by any means, but it's also not a great one. I think we have better ways of gaining more mana on a recurring basis, and this card could just step aside to make room for them. The RMS Titanic follows up our Mindstone, and while it's likely to ram itself into an opponent on the turn of ETBs and sack itself to give us a bunch of treasure, that likely leading us to be mana positive on the card, the damage not being all that inconsequential either, I think we could find stronger plays at 4 mana. Following our Titanic, we have the Pandorica, which faces out a single target until it leaves or becomes tapped. While facing out is better than exiling them, since it won't allow ETBs to be re-triggered whenever it stops being in play or becomes untapped, it's still not my favorite effect to sidestep an opponent. Last up is Wedding Ring, which can be useful if an opponent is in the right colors, but could just as easily be dead in the water. 
and is easy enough to play around since they have to draw the cards and gain that life on their turn to trigger it. Sure, you're guaranteed one extra card per round, but so are they. It really just pushes two players ahead in value, leaving the other two struggling to catch up. While this card could be a useful politic card, offering up life gain and card draw to someone who's behind, I just don't see it as something I'd recommend in just any deck. So what's replacing these 10 cards? Let's start off that list with Passionate Archaeologist. With two commanders potentially being on the field, we're slinging double damage around. We're suspending cards all the time and casting them from exile, so this is sure to hit hard and hit fast, especially if we have a ton of cards hit all at once off of our timey-wimey 10th Doctor ability. Following that up is Repeatable Suspension with Rousing Refrain. This sorcery is going to let us gain some mana based on the number of cards in an opponent's hand, and then it's going to suspend itself for three turns, meaning that we could actually trigger it every single turn with our Doctor, allowing us to cast and suspend even more cards. This next card definitely ate up our budget, and it's Jessica's Will. Much like Rousing Refrain, we're gaining extra mana based off an opponent's hand, and if we have our commander out, or just prefer it, we could exile the top three cards of our deck and play them this turn. Chromatic Escape is the ultimate don't touch me card in this deck. With it, until our next turn, creatures can't attack us. And then it can suspend it with three time counters on it, meaning we could easily remove it with our doctor's ability, playing it every single turn. This forces our opponents to have ways of dealing damage other than attacking, meaning they're either going to need an alternate win con, or they're going to need to have some damage that they can sling around all their own. Rift Elemental follows up that escape and lets us remove time counters from permanents we control or from cards we own in exile, speeding up the time it takes to cast them. We can do this multiple times a turn and even do so on our opponent's turn for a little bit of a surprise spell casting. Pia Nalar, Consul of Revival, rewards us for playing cards out of exile with some hasty thopters to act as chump lockers or to chip away at our opponent's life. With some of our repeated suspension cards, we can net a few Thopters per turn and overwhelm our opponents. Lelia, the Blade Reforge is up next and is pulling double duty, allowing us to exile and play spells off the top of our library, and gets bigger each time we exile a card off the top. At 3 mana, they easily follow up Rose Tyler, allowing us to play some of our key pieces on curve, and with our Doctor fueling her as well, she's going to get larger and larger with each passing turn. Jura's Time Bug is up next, and while it isn't as powerful as Time Travel, which hits all of our cards, it does let us add or remove a time counter from a single source at the cost of being tapped down to do so. Up next is a card from one of the other pre-cons, but it's too good not to use in all of them to be honest. It's the Impossible Girl, Clara Oswald. At 6 mana, she's kind of expensive, but she doubles up all of the triggered abilities of our Doctors when she's on the field. Exiling extra cards off our Doctor is going to let us, you know, really get extra rewards from time traveling with that little timey-wimey that we're so fond of. The last card in our list is Aeon Chronicler, who has an expensive suspend cost, but we're hoping to suspend them with a Doctor or some other cards that let us cheat that cost. Each time we remove a time counter from this creature, we get to draw a card. We never really want to see them hit the field, and if we time our time travel just right, they never will. Do they deserve better than being a card draw engine? Let me know in the comments below. Before we wrap things up, we do have a few honorable mentions, starting with Lithoform Engine. We could use this to copy triggered abilities, instant or sorcery spells, and even permanent spells. It's super versatile, and with our commanders both having triggered abilities, would slot in here perfectly. In a similar vein, we have Strionic Resonator, as a little less powerful, only being able to copy triggered abilities, but still gets that job done. Last up, we have Sensei's Divining Top, which allows us to control the top of our deck, ensuring the spells we want to get suspended get suspended. Should I put this in in lieu of Jessica's Will? Let me know in the comment section down below. It's time for the Golden Nightmare of the deck, and I think it has to go to all of history all at once. This card could really let us pop off a time travel, and if we've already seen a bunch of spells get cast this turn, we could really have fun with how we manipulate those time counters, since it storms off for each spell we've already cast. But guys, that's the upgrade guide, where the cards that I cut that you think should have stayed, cards that I added that you don't think belong here. 
Which Doctor Who precon would you like to see next? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, if you want help with your own decks or just want to sling some spells over on Spell Table, consider joining the Discord. And until next time, good luck with your builds.